really did not share very much with my family or friends um, for a long, long time. Uh, kept it to myself. Um, most of the time when I went in to have treatments, I kept it to myself. I did it and went in myself. Uh, and kept people at bay. And um, so my advice would be, don't do that. What I found along the way uh, was that uh, my family actually suffered quite a lot by the fact that they didn't know what was happening to me and what my prognosis was and, you know, um, whether, whether I was going to come back from this treatment or this operation, that type of thing. So that's not, that, that's a poor way to handle it. And I think I also uh, forfeited, um, you know, real active support from my family and friends um, that I could have otherwise gained without pushing them aside. So my advice would be, um, you know, try and be open, try and um, tell people around you and, um, and include people because uh, they benefit from it and, and you benefit as well. You know, naturally enough, everyone has a different response to their diagnosis. Um, people have different needs and whatnot and, and handle what they've been told differently. So, uh, you know, what, what people worry about most of, the, most of all seems to be what to say. You know, I don't know what to say. I, can't, I might say the wrong thing. Um, to my mind, I think it's, it's mostly important to tell the person that, you know, you are sorry to hear it, but um, uh, that you're, you're there for them in terms of support uh, if they need it. And um, what's really useful as well is if people are really specific about what they offer because people more often than not will say, you know, anything you need, let me know. If they make specific offers, you know, listen, uh, your dogs must be, well, must need walking while you're in hospital and while, you know, Jill's mm. uh, up there with you, you know. Um, would you like me to go and walk, you, walk your dogs? Or would you like me to bring in some food? Or would you like us to freeze, uh, get some food and, and take it to your place and put it in your freezer? Things like that, you know, which are really practical, helpful things and very specific. That's the most beneficial sort of um, support that you can get from people. Sometimes um, it might not, you might not take them up on it initially but you might think a month down the track it would be nice for them to, have, to, to do this, it would be really helpful, but you don't really want to ask then because they haven't mentioned it since, but if they sort of mention it again, you know, you know, really any time, then you feel more inclined to, to lean on them a little bit, which can be a big help. Mm. This is also a difficult time and a difficult process for family and support people of people with these diseases. And so one of the worst things for family is not knowing what's happening uh, in some cases and in order for them to, to support the person with the disease to the best of their ability, having knowledge of what's going on, what the plans are, what the risks are of what, we, what they're going through is very important. I think it's crucial that people where possible have family or support people who they share this knowledge with. Uh, I think that as, I've, as with patients, the unknown is often more scary than the known. I think honesty is always best, uh, and, and so the more information can be shared with family members, including children, where appropriate, the better. This is devastating for family members as well, and it's that sense of powerlessness that the patient feels even worse for the family because I mean, they can't have the nausea or the side effects that might go with the chemotherapy. They obviously have a lot of the fear that goes of the disease and, and, and the problems that go for the patient. Um, I think their role is support and being there with their with their loved one as much as possible. Sometimes it's very difficult because it's a, it's a, it's being torn between support for their loved one in the hospital, which might be several hours drive away, and the kids at home who are trying to carry on with their normal life and go to school. I think seek, uh, information's important, I think my advice is to find out what's going on, try and get ideas of, about time frames, what's happening. I think people shouldn't be frightened to ask for help. We have obviously help agencies within our services, we have social workers, we have, uh, on uh, we have, a, we have psychologists, we have uh, for younger people there's adolescent and young adult services and there's a lot of that professional help but also people have their own network of friends and support people and I think don't be frightened to ask for help. Um, this is a big deal, and I think that's where I think information is important. I think sometimes people think, oh yeah, what's this lymphoma, you know, it's not that serious, or you know, we can cure these diseases, but it's hard work curing these diseases, and the more support people can get, the better, and the more information that people can give their friends so that they can be um, more specific about their help. People can ask specific for, for specific things, 
because there's a tendency to say, yes, we'll do anything we can, let us know. I think people shouldn't be frightened to let them know. So what I'd like you to do is cook a couple of meals. That would be very helpful, uh, or specific suggestions like that. I, I, I couldn't have coped physically alone for a start, um, you know, and, uh, and also it was very, 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 very hard for me. Over, it went over probably an 18 month period. And uh, so emotionally it was very draining as well, you know, sort of um, uh, we'd make some progress and then we'd go backwards, you know, and then I had another recurrence and things like that. Um, and also just the logistical, um, you know, elements of actually getting to and from the hospital. Without having Jill, you know, supporting me in that, uh, I don't know what I would have done. I mean, I would have been um, in trouble, in big trouble. The, the bizarre thing uh, was, you know, Jill having to carry my bag in and out of the hospital. You know, that was, a, you know, sort of emasculating in a wee bit, a wee bit. but, uh, but it's, you know, you have to put your pride aside as a guy um, and think that you're the man of the uh, relationship and you're the mm. strong one uh, and set that aside. Having a support person around, patient if you like, um, but also having support people around you as well. So having your friends and your family understanding what the situation is, not trying to cope with everything yourself and sort of letting other people help from time to time. I think it's really important to maximise your time with the doctors because the time generally isn't long. Um, they don't have that much time to spend with each individual patient. So I think it's really important to plan your, um, your meetings with your doctors. Um, for me, um, I learned um, that idle uh, conversation and, and nice chit chat really needed to be brief and we needed to get onto the, the real issues and the real questions quite quickly. Um, very often I would write down the questions that I wanted to ask because you could easily forget those and, and put them to the doctor uh, and make sure you get the answer. Um, sometimes, for whatever reason, um, you know, the doctor may not want to give you a direct answer or may not have an answer to give you right at that moment. Um, if that was the case, I would always make sure I would ask them to you know, please find out whatever needed to be you know, found out and bring the answer back to me next time. And also to have somebody with you mm. during those conversations is crucial because invariably when I was asked a question, uh, so I would ask a question and get the answer. Um, at some point, you know, I would, I would miss uh, some element of the, of the conversation. And uh, often you would say to me, wouldn't you, well, yeah. remember that he said that? And I said, yeah. well, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that happens in, particularly when they use a word which um, strikes fear up in your heart, you know. But having a support person can be very useful if that's possible because two, ears, two sets of ears are better than one. I think that um, often people as soon as the doctor has left, they suddenly wish they'd asked a question. So I think writing lists is very important. I think it's very useful to have lists of questions. Some people have suggested taping interviews with, with doctors and other, other health professionals, and I think that can be useful for some people. I, I personally have no objection to being taped if necessary, um, or if that suits, if, if it's helpful for the patient. Uh, and I, I would imagine most health professionals would feel reasonably happy with that. To have a sense of, of control, to have some sense of control over some circumstances within the cancer battle is crucial. For me, it, uh, it, it enabled me to um, not be so concerned and not be so distraught uh, most of the time. It enabled me to feel I was participating meaningfully in um, my recovery or my aspirations for recovery. And that's important because you've got to take personal responsibility for your own um, you know, outcomes really. You know, it makes me think, if I can control this and I can control that, um, you know, I feel like I'm on track and I feel positive about the outcomes. I think it's very important that the person with the disease is part of the team dealing with the disease. And by having a positive attitude, that may mean simply taking an interest in what's happening, being aware of what's happening, uh, being involved in the decisions about what's happening can, can help them. There are some limited things that people can do, but as I've, I've, as I've said before, people can eat well while they can, they can exercise within limitations while they can. All these things can help their outcome.